Hey guys, this is John, and uh, I'm here uh, going to work on another tree today. This is a uh, boxwood that a good friend of mine gave to me. Um, it's a Kingsville boxwood. I think it actually came from the Bones Eye Learning Center in Charlotte, North Carolina. It just doesn't excite me. I need something that really grabs my interest and says, wow. So we'll, we'll see if we can't do something with, like that with this tree. Who knows? One of the first things I want to do is uh, use a little soapy water uh, and a, I'm going to use a brush with a nylon bristle and I'm going to scrub the trunk and see if I can't get some of the green off of here. Okay, you can see now after uh, some soap and water and a good rinse and a little brushing that uh, yeah, there's still some could be clean, but that bark is much wider than it was. Okay, I mentioned earlier that I was going to try to do something a little different with this tree to give it uh, to to give it a little interest. So uh, one of the things I'm going to do is change the planting angle significantly. So I went ahead and tried to mimic uh, what the planting angle is going to be uh, as I'm pruning. I'm going to use a kind of a trick here on this first this first branch. I'm going to wire this branch right here. And sometimes, rather than putting on a branch strong enough or a wire strong enough to use the uh, to bend the branch, I'll put on two wires that are slightly smaller. Uh, and then that way, um, they end up strong enough to bend the branch, but I can spread them out, and I feel like it protects the branch from breaking more. So. Um, Typically, I would wire from branch to branch, but this time, since I'm using two wires, I'm just going to use a U, and then I'm going to wrap them out the uh, the end of the branch. So. Now, what I have is a, is coils that are separated rather than together. So when I go to bend this branch. I, I have um, wire all along it protecting it from breaking. So. We'll have to see if this branch stays or not. Okay. The fortunate thing is boxwoods are really tolerant of root pruning, so um, I've got a long ways to go here to prune these roots to get them down into this pot that I'd like to put this tree into. So um, I just wanted to give you an idea, but I was thinking I, I want to see the tree in the pot uh, as I begin to prune the roots so I know what needs to be pruned and what can be saved and um, uh, where I need to go. So I'm going to have to take a lot off the back. Okay, and a good bit off the underneath, but uh, we'll get the root hooks out and the uh, root pruners, and we'll go to work. Okay, as I'm looking here, and I'm looking at the branches, and you know the trunk's got a nice wide base, and all the branches tend to curve, and uh, it's a little straight there. This straightness back here is kind of hidden by this other branch, but I get to right here, and I got a concern. I'm just not sure I like the way that looks, so um, I may take out uh, a section here. 
I'm trying to decide if it'll look better, so I'm going to go for it. Um, Yeah, I don't know what you think, but I think that was probably a pretty good decision there. Now I have one apex instead of two. Even though a lot of trees, when you look at them, they really do have a... Uh, it takes multiple branches to make an apex, but um, I think I can go with this. Okay, um, I've got the, the pot already. I've added a little bit of soil on the bottom. Uh, just get some soil under the, the tree, between the tree and the pot. Uh, now I want to really make sure I get the tree in the correct position. This is where uh, most people I know that try to do bonsai end up frustrated because it's very difficult to get a tree in a pot exactly the right way. You just tend to look at it later and think, Oh, it should have been this way or that way, so there's always the opportunity to repot. I think that's pretty close. Um, I'm going to take the wires that I added to the bottom of the pot and uh, connect them and give them a twist. I'll come back with my pliers and uh, pull them tight and really get this snugged in here well. Okay, uh, tree's cleaned up. The soil's all been, everything's been watered in. Uh, all the soil's been, uh, uh, I've used a chopstick to make sure I've removed all the air pockets. Um, what I have now is some chopped long fiber sphagnum moss. I just wet the sphagnum moss, uh, water it up in my hand, and uh, take a pair of pruners and just, just prune it till I get some fine pieces. Um, I'm going to put a little cover over the soil. Uh, a couple of reasons. This tree, because of the angle of the pot, uh, if I get a little crazy with the water, it's going to wash the soil right out. The moss will also provide, the sphagnum moss will also provide uh, a good soil, a good surface um, uh, that will help keep the soil moist, the soil underneath of it moist, and also uh, help moss survive on bonsai soil because moss just doesn't want to really live on bonsai soil very well. So you really want moss to do well and in this planting I think I do want some moss. Um, uh, this sphagnum moss will, will serve several functions. So I just kind of place it on and then I just kind of pack it down with my fingers. Um, <clears throat> not really worried about exposing a bunch of roots at this point. Uh, I'll do that next time I repot this tree. Next time it gets a little more comfortable. Right now I just want to make sure it's uh, um, in here and going to be healthy and do well and recover well from this uh, out of season kind of shaping. So there's sphagnum moss. Now I'll go find some regular moss and I'll be back to, to moss. One last thing I'm going to do to this tree uh, is where this wound is right here. It's done a good job of healing so far, but um, it's, in the time I've had it, it hasn't really made any changes. So I'm going to re-wound the edges and then redress it with a wound sealer so that it will continue to, uh, uh, to, to fill in and close that wound. Okay, the gray doesn't do much for the overall picture, but there she is, all finished.